one of the um, one of the reasons that we think analyzing your own internal networks is so critical is you know a senior leader or leadership team they can see this part of the organization and they can tell themselves how it maps into their uh, their strategic plan and if they're they're good they, they can tell them how that's going to make the organization successful right and they create this sort of feedback loop um, but this isn't solely how an organization works right um, an organization is a combination of really two ba major things in, in, in our view. Um, the structured part, what it's like on paper, and the unstructured sort of human networks. Uh, and your environment around you also has these. You have these unstructured sort of very complex problems, and then your other big competitors that you can you can see and sort of read in the market. Um, our, our belief at uh, McChrystal Group is that the winning organizations um, in today's very complex world are a combination of those two. They are both uh, structured. They have a really good uh, traditional bureaucratic models in place for the parts of the organization that need to follow specific rules. And they leverage the unstructured uh, networks very effectively. Um, and they, they can create these uh, lines very purposefully through culture, through communication norms, through transparency, through how they uh, knowledge management tools around the organization and encouraging folks, so that sort of process stuff that they can put in place, that encourage folks to say, hey, I can't tell you when you'll need to reach across and create a network connection with this person over here, or create a, a sort of a, a unique uh, network that goes, goes across multiple boundaries, but I'm gonna process wise, I'm gonna connect you with the right people in the right cadence to have conversations. The knowledge management tools will be there to you, for you to access real-time data. And I, I will then leave it up to you to to recognize when I need to go sort of off script a little bit and reach across and create these other uh, network dynamics. But before an organization just dives into that, we love to run them through an, an analytics project that allows them to see not the organization as it exists on paper, but the, uh, the networks that exist inside of that organization, right? Which some of which are sort of intuitive and, and you know, or a senior leadership team will say, well, yeah, I, I see why I would have a, you know, a network down into my SVPs and they have networks down into their, you know, parts of the business. So you'll start to see these patterns that sort of recognize that look like the organization as it's built oftentimes, like a very common uh, network pattern that we'll see, we'll, we refer to as the starfish pattern. You'll have the executive team, all of these being individual nodes, uh, every node being an individual, individual per, part of the organization. And they're tightly coupled, right? They're connected together uh, because this is the exec team and they spend a lot of time together. They might be in the same building, they might be in the same city, they might just talk remotely all the time. And so they develop tight ties within, within one another. And then off of the, that's why we call our starfish, off of the executive team, you'll start to see like their vertical. So here are her VPs, they're tightly connected. Um, here are their individual parts of the business that go down and then out here to the front line you'll oftentimes in a, in a starfish, you'll see sort of uh, thinner connections. Then when you get out closer to the market, you start to see clusters again, right? Now I have this sales team that is uh, heavily focused on the New York market. Now I have this, this R and D team that's looking at all the new products we should be playing with. Um, and so you'll see this pattern sort of continue out and out into the organization. Now you collect this data pretty simply through just querying the organization. The, the survey models for this are, are relatively straightforward. Um, by just asking folks a few simple questions, uh, such as who do you go to for uh, insights on the market? Who do you go to for decision making? Who do you go to to uh, you know understand competitive trends? Whatever. There's lots of ways you can shape the questions you're going to ask an organization, depending on what networks you want to understand. And this is where it starts to get interesting, right? Because then the, a leadership team can go back after you, they've seen these sort of images. This is what it actually looks like. Here's how humans connect and share information. Then they can map those insights against their, their strategy and say, okay, wait a second. Now, now I see where there's an issue. Like part of our strategy is, you know, as, as an example, you know, we, we, this is a, a company we acquired a year ago, let's say, uh, because they have access to this great part of the market or their product is fantastic. But we, we acquired them because we want to be able to move faster than competitors in that part of the market. They do that really well, so we bought them. We've integrated them, but 
our strategy has them being tightly coupled with our research and development folks, right? So we can take the product that they built, make it better, faster, and at better scale than, than they were as a small startup, right? But when we look at how things are actually connecting, even though we say our new uh, acquisition is integrated into the business, they're really not from a network sense, right? There's no relationship between the, the folks in this business that we acquired and our R&D folks, right? For them to see something in their part of the market, they're still going through their bosses, going to their bosses, going to the executive team. And we're doing, you know, a dozen other things on any given day. And then it eventually trickles its way down to R&D. They say, yeah, we can do that. It works its way back up, et cetera, et cetera. So now we've taken this really fast, awesome startup and we've made it as slow as our big, big traditional bureaucracy. And then you can overlay that with sort of cultural norms and understand, well, yeah, that's why they're, that's why they're saying they're frustrated. That's why the attrition in this, in this newly acquired business might be higher than it is in, in other parts of the business, um, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, that's why this, that part of our strategy isn't working, which is probably costing us dollars and uh, credibility with our analysts, et cetera. And so how can we, through a process and cultural lens, start to close that gap? This gives executives a snapshot like a, a visualization of the organization that they can say, okay, now I have a problem I can solve. I want tighter connection between the front edge of this business that I acquired because they're the ones seeing the opportunity uh, over to our folks in research and development. I want, I want a network tie that looks like, like this, right? And so how do I go about that? What sort of forms do I need in place? Do I need a, a common portal where they can share information back and forth? Do I need human exchange, right? Do I need somebody from this startup to come and spend a day, a week, a month, or whatever it is with R&D and start to explain what they're seeing or vice versa? There's lots of solutions you can layer on top of that. Um, but until you can visualize it through a, a network analytics process, it's very hard to you know, put that into action, right? And a lot of leaders get frustrated by, by just saying, hey, this, this part of the strategy, we all need to work better as a team. Like, Okay, but what does that actually mean, right? When you put a visualization like this in front of uh, an organization, then it makes sense to the, the teammates that are living in this vertical and this vertical to say, okay, now here's why it isn't strategically getting us where we wanna go. There's a process solution to this that we're starting to put in place and a culture one as well. So, and what I wanna see eventually is a tighter connection between these parts of the business.